Uh, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad to have this opportunity uh, to attend this session and uh, uh, share uh, some of my um, you know, point of views on these important topics with you. Um, so my name is uh, Mohammad Hussein Amir Husseini. I am an associate professor in computer science and digital technologies, uh, and my research interests and um, uh, expertise is uh, uh, focused on uh, applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning in different disciplines. Um, and obviously, I'm um, uh, working at University of East London. Uh, so uh, the topic of my presentation is the impact of artificial intelligence on the future of uh, Mediterranean countries. Um, and just as a brief induction before we go to the main topic, um, I would like to mention that uh, AI, uh, obviously we all know that is very rapidly transforming uh, different industries and businesses and societies across the globe. Uh, and uh, obviously Mediterranean region is not an exception. Um, so uh, considering that this region is a very diverse area covering from uh, Southern Europe to North Afri uh, Africa, uh, or parts of the Middle East, um, we should understand that Mediterranean is very uniquely positioned uh, to uh, harness the power of uh, potential power of uh, artificial intelligence in different disciplines, including uh, uh, economic growth, improved governance, and social well being. So, um, and obviously, um, when we apply AI to different disciplines, this transformation also brings uh, considerable challenges. Uh, and people are worried about job displacement, inequality, and very serious ethical concerns. So what I'm going to do uh, in, in this presentation, I, I will try to explore the potential impact of artificial intelligence on the future of Mediterranean countries uh, across different sectors. We're going to talk about economic uh, growth and strategies, social dynamics, and uh, of course, environmental sustainability, which is a very hot topic these days. Uh, and whatever I say, I try to provide the, the most recent and uh, relevant uh, references for it, because this is a topic that um, you can talk about it for days. So uh, if you are interested to read more about any specific part of you know uh, this presentation and uh, read a little bit more in details about some information that I provide you with, uh, you can obviously go uh, to the references that I, I, I will provide you and uh, you can read more about it. So before we, uh, we talk about how AI can contribute to uh, addressing the um, uh, challenges and help to uh, improve the situation in, in Mediterranean region, uh, we should understand what challenges our Mediterranean countries are dealing with. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly go through a couple of existing challenges uh, in these countries, and I'm going to start with economic uh, inequality, which is one of the most significant existing challenges. So there is always a, a very considerable uh, uh, economic uh, uh, difference between urban areas or rural areas and uh, development gap between, uh, for instance, Southern Europe and North Africa is very considerable. Uh, another existing challenge that these countries are dealing with is high employment and uh, skill uh, skills gap. So the, the unemployment rate between young generations, especially in uh, North Africa, in countries such as uh, Tunisia, Egypt, Morocco, is very considerable. And we need to talk about it and, and uh, try to identify how AR can, can help to improve the situation in this regard. Mismatch between education and labor market needs is, is also another uh, important thing in regards to high un unemployment and skills, uh, skills gap. Um, limited sources, limited uh, water and inefficient agriculture uh, is another existing challenge, which is very significant. Um, we know that the way that agriculture 
industry is going on is uh, kind of inefficient in regards to water consumption uh, in uh, especially in North Africa and um, uh, limited water sources um, is a very significant issue. Vulnerability to climate change is another existing issue. So we know that rising temperature um, and sea level rise and uh, all the relevant uh, issues are very significant, uh, uh, not just in this uh, region in, uh, across the globe, and the, the impact on uh, ecosystems, agriculture, tourism, and fishing is really important in this specific region because of the you know, you know um, uh, infrastructures and nature of um, the um, agriculture. Um, Another issue is aging populations. So we know that countries like Italy, Spain, Greece are experiencing uh, significant aging uh, uh, populations. And uh, it, this obviously uh, has direct and indirect impact on healthcare system. Uh, migration and humanitarian uh, 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 challenges uh, is also very significant Mediterranean as a major transit region for uh, migration or struggling with uh, these challenges. And um, obviously there are some issues with uh, managing uh, migration and providing aid. Uh, so we want to explore how AI can address this specific area. Uh, governance issue, there are some uh, considerable uh, bureaucratic uh, inefficiencies in governments corruption and lack of transparency in, in, in different countries in the region and uh, practicing efficient you know, um, uh, governance and economic development is a significant challenge. Uh, and of course, tourism management and uh, overcrowding issues uh, is something that we need to seriously think about it. Uh, some of the countries in the region are heavily relying on tourism uh, countries like Spain, Italy, Greece, and we already know that there have been some protests and local people are not happy with uh, these uh, overcrowding issues and the way that their uh, infrastructure and the resources are, uh, are used by the uh, tourists. And overcrowding obviously leads to infrastructure uh, stress and environmental uh, you know, uh, challenges. Um, and Geopolitical um, uh, tensions and securities, another area that AI might be able to you know, contribute and address the relevant challenges. There are infrastructure, um, protection and energy grid security issues and geopolitical tensions in the Mediterranean region has always been there. And finally, cultural heritage uh, prevention. So uh, countries have been struggling with um, uh, preserving you know, Asian monuments, artifacts, and, and uh, specific traditions, and obviously the impact of environmental uh, 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 you know, uh, issues and this kind of uh, modernization uh, should be uh, you know, carefully considered when we talk about this specific area. So uh, let's see how AI can mitigate some of these major challenges, some of these existing challenges in Mediterranean countries. So based on the order of the challenges that I mentioned, I'm gonna go through uh, the AI uh, powered solutions to address these challenges and see how AI can contribute to this. So uh, AI driven economic transformation is the first point I'm gonna talk about it. So. Uh, the Mediterranean region, uh, uh, region's economy, as we know, is very diverse. So uh, some of the countries are significantly relying on sectors such as tourism, agriculture, manufacturing, as I mentioned previously. And obviously, artificial intelligence can offer significant potential for growth in these areas. But how? Uh, if we focus on transforming traditional industries, this is where AI can play a very significant role uh, through automation 
of the existing manual processes as well as data-driven decision-making to facilitate the process of decision-making and uh, to uh, help the policymakers and managers when they want to come up with big decisions. Um, and also we need to uh, consider the role of AI in key sectors. Uh, so I'm gonna divide it to three different uh, specific sectors. I'm gonna start with um, after uh, uh, understanding the impact on economic transformation, I'm gonna start with tourism and uh, hospitality. So AI can be considered as a tool uh, that can significantly revolutionize the tourism sector. Um, and uh, countries such as Spain, Italy, Greece are already considering this, you know, uh, significant potential. Um, we already know AI-powered chatbots and virtual assistance systems are uh, very efficient. Uh, for, uh, um, they can be very efficiently used for enhancing customer service in different uh, disciplines, but specifically in tourism and hospitality, uh, personalized travel recommendations uh, for improving the experience for visitors is something that AI can significantly contribute to it. Uh, also, real-time data analysis uh, can facilitate the process of predicting tourist trends and it can help you uh, help the countries to optimize the resource allocation uh, in the peak times, and uh, they can make sure that sustainability in, in, in popular destinations is um, efficiently uh, considered and the relevant issues are uh, efficiently addressed. Uh, digitalization of cultural artifacts can. Um, make it possible for other uh, audience from across the globe to access uh, you know these um, um, uh, very attractive uh, you know uh, sites and uh, traditions and artifacts and can make them accessible to glo uh, global audience and AI powered language translation tools can help to address communication gaps uh, because there, there is a diverse uh, 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 languages are spoken in the region and uh, this will facilitate the process of greater cultural exchange in the region. Uh, the next sector that AI can significantly contribute to is uh, agriculture. Um, we know that many countries in the region, such as Spain, Italy, Morocco, Tunisia, are known for their uh, agricultural exports. And um, AI in uh, uh, precision framing can uh, uh, help to optimize water usage, improve crop yields and uh, reduce waste in the field. And uh, on the other hand, drones and specific sensors which are equipped with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning techniques, deep learning techniques can monitor soil health and uh, weather conditions and, and they can help farmers to make more informed uh, decisions. Uh, so when we talk about the potential of AI in these specific sectors, uh, also it is promising you know, economic growth, but obviously there are considerable risks that we need to be aware of and we need to think about them and have a clear strategy uh, to respond to these uh, you know, risks or uh, obstacles. Uh, um, some of the risks might, might be uh, result in uh, deepening inequalities uh, within and between Mediterranean countries. And this is a, a significant issue to be considered. Um, some of the... Uh, Tech cities, the cities which are known as uh, tech or uh, coastal regions are probably benefiting more from AI advancements if you compare them with uh, rural and on more uh, under the uh, you know, uh, developed areas uh, in the region. And this is where governments uh, 
should get involved and they must ensure that uh, the opportunities which are created by artificial intelligence are inclusive uh, and they have to focus on policies that can support uh, regional development and bridge the digital divide that I'm going to talk about it later. So, um, how this can happen? First, uh, having a clear strategy about the startups and innovation. So AI is driving innovation hubs and, and startup uh, ecosystems in med many different Mediterranean countries. Uh, for instance, in uh, Southern European countries, uh, especially Spain and Italy, uh, these countries are the home uh, to a, a growing number of uh, artificial intelligence focused startups. Um, and um, we can say that the main focus in these countries is more uh, on fintech, health tech, and green technologies and sustainability. Uh, North African countries like Tunisia, Egypt are investing in tech uh, incubators and uh, startup accelerators uh, to be able to compete uh, with other parts of the region and foster you know, home, homegrown talent in artificial intelligence and digital technologies. High employment and skills gap. Uh, we talked about it as one of the existing challenges that uh, the countries in the region are dealing with. So um, the impact of AI on labor markets uh, is one of the most critical challenges that these countries in the region are facing with. So AI can create new opportunities, particularly in, in tech-related fields, but it may also displace workers in traditional sectors. So this has always been a, a serious worries for people. Um, they don't want to lose jobs. So AI can forecast labor market needs and facilitate the process of designing reskilling programs. And it can also be used to personalize education, particularly in uh, tech or tech related fields. Um, job displacement with job creation. Uh, so AI contribute to automating routine tasks or manual tasks. Uh, which can be easily done automatically. Uh, so many jobs, in ma spe especially manufacturing and, and agriculture or uh, uh, supply chain management and logistics uh, may disappear. Uh, and Mediterranean, Mediterranean uh, uh, port cities such as Barcelona are already adopting AI-driven logistics systems that can reduce the need for manual labor so they have already started using this, uh, you know, uh, potential power of AI for uh, in regards to automating the processes. On the other hand, new jobs will emerge in AI development, data analysis, cybersecurity, and all other tech-related fields. This is really important to be considered because what you hear in media is that AI is uh doing something crazy that will result in losing jobs and people are going to be jobless and and um, this will reduce the satisfaction in the societies and raise many other issues i'm just going to mention one uh, important uh, report which was released in 2015 if i'm right uh in the uk deloitte uh, which is a tech company um uh published a report uh about the uh, job displacement and job creation uh, in uh, in the uh, in the years that we are dealing with AI automation. So in 2015, they mentioned that 800,000 jobs were lost because of AI automation uh, in the UK. This is a huge number, and the media and newsletters were going crazy about this, but. What they didn't do is that they didn't mention, I hope it wasn't intentionally, they didn't mention that in the same report, they also mentioned that because of this AR automation, 3.5 million new jobs were created. So 
we should always consider uh, the other half of the glass as well, not just the empty half of the glass. So uh, countries that invest in digital skills and retraining programs obviously will be better equipped to handle this transition uh, uh, in, and, you know, uh, in these years that we are dealing with AI automation. Um, the importance of reskilling uh, should be very seriously considered. Uh, if we want to prevent mass un un unemployment in Mediterranean countries, most prioritize reskilling programs, and uh, those specific countries with uh, higher uh, unemployment rates, uh, specifically in North Africa, can face the most significant challenges in this regard. So governments, educational institutions, universities should focus on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that we call it STEM education to prepare the future generation for an AI-driven economy. And obviously they have to uh, allocate uh, the appropriate budget to support this plan. So the role of governments, if we want to be more clear on that, governments must play a very active role in easing the transition to an AI-powered economy. So investing in education, as I mentioned, uh, um, um, promoting uh, job retraining programs within the significant organizations or governmental related organizations and uh, 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 companies and businesses and help them to adopt AI uh, in a responsible way. And also uh, another aspect that the, the government can play a very significant role is collaborating with international bodies such as European Union and African Union. And this will... Uh, Maybe this will be very crucial in sharing best practices and securing funding for uh, AI initiatives. Uh, in regards to environmental challenges and sustainability and climate change, we can say AI can help to uh, climate uh, can 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 be used for climate change mitigation. It can be used to monitor environmental conditions predict uh, natural disasters and manage resources in a more efficient way. And AI-driven systems can also facilitate the process of optimizing water usage in agriculture, a critical issue for many countries in the field, such as Tunisia, Spain, and Egypt. Um, and in regards to rene renewable energy uh, and how AI can uh, contribute to it, AI-driven energy management systems can help uh, to optimize the use of uh, solar, wind, or uh, 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 hydroelectric power. These are already used, but not in an efficient way. So AI-driven energy management systems can uh, contribute to optimization aspect of uh, using these kind of energy resources to ensure a stable energy supply in countries um, such as Greece or Morocco, which are uh, investing a lot on renewable energy these days. Uh, aging population and the relevant healthcare system, as we mentioned, is another significant challenge. So AI can contribute to providing more accessible um, healthcare system. We all know that the countries are struggling with the healthcare uh, resources. Uh, so AI-powered diagnostic tools, telemedicine, and personalized treatments can revolutionize the healthcare system in Mediterranean countries, and particularly those countries with more limited access to medical services. Uh, in rural areas or, or in uh, North Africa or uh, Southern Europe. And it can also address the needs for aging populations, especially in Greece, Italy, and Spain, uh, uh, demographic shifts, uh, you know, specific challenges and significant challenges for healthcare infrastructure. In regards to migration management that we mentioned previously, we can say that AI can help to manage migration flows by using predictive analytics to track migration trains and improve border security. Uh, but obviously there are some ethical concerns that we should consider because use of AI 
uh, and technologies such as facial recognition can raise ethical concerns, particularly regarding to privacy and potential um, um, you, you know, for human rights violations. And these are the uh, things that policymakers in the region are currently focusing on. And policymakers will also need to strike a balance between security and ethical considerations. And AI in governance, as we mentioned at the uh, another existing challenge, it can enhance governance by improving public administration, service delivery and transparency using uh, synchronized and connected uh, data sources and uh, um, using automated platforms uh, to facilitate the administrative processes and Countries such as Spain and Tokyo are already implementing AI-driven solutions to modernize their public services, such as digital IDs and uh, AI-based tax systems, for instance. Um, so what governments uh, are doing this, they also need to make sure that AI is used in a way that it can enhance uh, the situation rather than uh, undermine uh, public trust and democracy, uh, uh, which is, uh, you know, a, a serious concern for people in uh, countries in the region, especially countries like uh, Turkey, for instance. Security and defense is another point. So we can, the, the use of AI uh, powered systems in, in military applications uh, has become uh, very popular these days. Uh, drones and uh, autonomous weapons are used, um, and this will obviously raise uh, geopolitical tensions uh, in a region which is already marked by very historical, you know, uh, rivalries and conflicts. So countries like Greece, Turkey, Egypt may face new security challenges because of this, and. Um, Obviously, AI, when AI is becoming a, a critical component of military strategy, they need to uh, think about upgrading their uh, defense strategies and uh, mechanisms and policies. And uh, if we consider the strategic location of the uh, uh, countries in the region, we can say AI can also be uh, uh, contributing to... Um, practicing uh, efficient diplomacy to predict crises, solve existing conflicts in the region and enhance cooperation between the countries in the region. And data-driven insights can provide uh, uh, you know, more uh, reasonable uh, solutions uh, to diplomats and um, enable them to uh, make more informed decisions in regional negotiations or trade deals, uh, economical uh, uh, decisions and climate agreements. And uh, finally, AI in digital divide. If we consider digital divide as one of the concerns in the region, we can say AI can help close the, the digital divide and uh, address this gap by providing more affordable uh, tech solutions, improving digital uh, literacy and uh, expanding high uh, quality internet access to uh, underserved regions. Um, so if I'm going to conclude everything and uh, just quickly navigate the AR future in the region, we can say that based on what we discussed, AR has the potential to significantly contribute and impact the future of Mediterranean countries uh, uh, by um, contributing to different sectors, uh, driving economic growth, improving public services, and addressing social and environmental and sustainability challenges in the region. And we should also remember that governments uh, play a very significant role in this transformation and uh, governments, businesses and civil society, they all have to work together to ensure that uh, the benefit of AI are distributed, uh, you know, in an equal way and uh, they can uh, address the ethical concerns uh, in a responsible and appropriate way. And by investing in education, innovation, um, ecosystems and uh, inclusive policies, 
the countries in the region can uh, harness the power of uh, artificial intelligence to create a more uh, uh, you know, meaningful and sustainable future for uh, all their uh, citizens. And you can see a list of references. The references were also mentioned in the slides. So you can just quickly go to the list of uh, references if you were interested to read more about different aspects of uh, this speech. Uh, thank you very much. If there is any question, I'm more than happy to uh, you know, uh, ask the, uh, uh, to respond to the questions. And if you're interested to contact me, to discuss any of these points that I mentioned, or if you're interested to initiate any collaboration, any research collaboration, uh, feel free to contact me. This is my academic email address, and I'm always uh, open to negotiate potential collaboration opportunities. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, back to you.